to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, Wi Fi's, welcome back to yet another underground transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. And if you haven't already, I'm irritated with you. I'm going to let you know that right now. But you've got an opportunity to fix that by subscribing to this channel. <laughs> And make sure you click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. When I go live, listen, you want to be there. You want to be there. Also, if you don't mind, comment for me below. When is a good time for me to do lives? I've been trying to kind of find my audience and meet you where you are. And so if you've got a certain day and time that just works better for you to come in and meet with me live, Go ahead and drop that in the comments. I would love to know, love to tailor that and engage you around the times that are best for you, you know, because I want you there. I want you there. I'll be there and I want you there as well. So in anyway, we are here today to talk about being in wireless spaces. Of course, I am the wireless woman and I'm hoping to be the first of very many. And I ran across another content creator on here. His channel will be linked down below. Does a lot of really awesome content for young men. And I have a 19 year old son. So I send him his videos all the time. And on this particular video, he was talking about not being able to find friends that want to go do white stuff and going on his own. I spent a whole year, I spent a whole year wireless and I would go on trips by myself all the time, lighting fires like he did, sitting beside rivers. Just having time and space to yourself is such a precious commodity. Um, the pandemic kind of taught us that, but I think a lot of people gave into lonely darkness and have come to fear that, have come to fear being alone. That's why I started my series on dating in a post-pandemic world, because people have lost so much of their social footing, social skills with other people. Because, I mean, you were cooped up in the house by yourself for two years. It's been traumatic. Some people that really need therapy, they really need to go see somebody. But hey, until they do, they're out here in the society amongst us and we got to deal with them. But this particular video spoke to me. I'm hoping it speaks to you because we have to learn how to be not by ourselves, but with ourselves. We got to integrate the shadow man and begin to really love on and nurture our own inner child. We have to really begin to have a love for our alone time and our alone space so that it doesn't turn into a canker sore and really become a dark place that we're running from. You know, you've got to practice the art of being mindful, of being present with yourself. And I really just loved what the young man was doing um, in this video and the example that it sets, you know, to really actually cultivate out space and time to love on yourself and spend time with yourself and show yourself that you enjoy your own company because you need that type of solidarity with yourself within relationships with other people. A lot of us don't even know ourselves in the dark. When we see ourselves in the dark, baby, we we closing a closet door on that. We putting a deadbolt on that when you really need to discover that. Sit down, read a book, 
put your phone down, go somewhere where nobody knows your name and, and then begin to build conversations and relationships with people you don't know. I was out today. I went to go get some ice cream. I didn't want to know I was going to get some ice cream because I really need to be on a diet. But while I was standing in line, this older white lady walked up. Y'all know I live in East West South Carolina now, but the people are really nice. White people are really nice. I see why black people are down here assimilating. It feels like get out nice here. Like they are, they are nice. Like, I don't know if I'm inside of some sort of simulation, like the Truman Show or what, because they very nice, I, I way nicer than I expected out of rural South Carolina. I mean, I was just driving through Greer down here in South Carolina. And there was a shop with a Confederate flag, a large, 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 large Confederate flag blowing outside. And it said, don't wait to get prepared or we will be prepared or something like that. But against the backdrop of that, there's also a lot of really, really nice people who make me feel welcome here. I had such a wonderful, amazing conversation with this woman. I bought her ice cream. I said, you know what? I'm a blesser, Jesus. So. You know, just striking up that conversation with a smooth, cool stranger that, you know, is totally from a different generation, um, a different demographic, you know, than me. It takes work. To It takes a, a certain amount of comfort with yourself to be able to speak to people from the place that you're in, but also acknowledge their personhood as well and make them feel comfortable engaging with you. You know, these are skills we can kind of practice everywhere, but I've never really gained the confidence that I needed to be able to engage strangers and other people like I did when I was off the grid doing things that I wouldn't have ordinarily done. Challenge yourself. Cut that phone the fuck off. We are creating echo chambers and communities of people who are just like us, think like us, feel the same way we do, have the same motivation, come from the same place. I even hear people say it with therapy because, you know, I'm in therapy and my therapist is an older, much older white man. But I hear a lot of people that won't even go to therapy because they can't find a black female therapist from Compton. Like it's got to be this very specialized thing in order for people to engage with you. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to speak to someone who's not just like you. And you're not going to do it if you're buried in your phones all day, if you're in the same environments that make you comfortable. Just going to the mountains and things like that in North Carolina, taking day trips. You know, I didn't have my GPS, so I would have to stop in the store sometimes and ask people like, where is this? I'm I'm looking for this certain place and I can't find it. And you just end up with the most interesting conversation sometimes in places that you wouldn't expect them. And y'all know I'm on the dating process on the dating app, but the skills that I need to engage with the type of people that are going to be pulled out of all these random places on the dating app. You get them in real life, though. You can't get them in that digital space. So it's time for us to be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. It's not going to happen in the in the in the digital metasphere space. You got to be a real person. Got to be a real live boy, Pinocchio, and go out into the world. There's so much beauty out here, and there's so much beauty in people that. Don't necessarily look like you. Don't necessarily agree with you. You know, I'm all black people all the time. I'm super revolutionary. But you have to now take the group you belong to and your subset and integrate it into a larger society as a whole. And we won't be able to do that if we're inside of echo chambers that just reverberate everything we already believe about the world, even when it's not true. So if you see what I see and you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. Have you ever tried a wireless trip? Have you ever gone somewhere and just done a complete e-fast just done a complete digital deconstruction. I would love to hear about it. 
what did you gain from it? You know, did you feel a deeper sense of self and belonging? Because I know I did. And I would love to hear if, if it had the same effect on anyone else or if you were just bored to death and, and hated it. Go ahead and tell me in those comments. Until the next time, though, you already know what the drill is. We're dismissed.